My name is Paco, I am a classical philologist from Spain and I'm going to teach you Latin. Welcome to the Latin from Scratch course on latinfromscratch.com and uh, welcome to the first class, which actually is not the first class, but the zero class. This is the quick start to learning Latin. And uh, make no mistake, this is not like, um, uh, because it's zero, that doesn't mean that this class is not important. Actually, this is the most important class in your uh, journey uh, into learning Latin, okay? So, let's just, uh, as I say here, we'll begin the course by cutting right to the chase. No, that's why this class is so important. We'll learn only the absolutely fundamental grammar that we need before starting right away with the analysis translation of Latin sentences and reading basic Latin texts. So, my purpose with this class is pretty much to teach you everything that you need to start in uh, less than 20 minutes, okay? So, let's begin. This is what we are about to learn in these 20 minutes, let's say. Classical pronunciation, cases and their syntax. The first declension, the active indicative present tense, the present tense, and uh, later we will start practicing right away. As I said, this quick start lesson includes the essential theory. After understanding, studying and learning in this order, this zeroth class, you will be able to analyze, translate and or read basic Latin texts. So, let's begin. The first thing that we need to know is the basics of classical pronunciation. And as you can see, I, uh, because you, you might be thinking like, why classical pronunciation? Uh, what, um, isn't Latin Latin? What's, what's the difference? What's the point of this? No? Yeah, so uh, there are different kinds of Latin pronunciation, mostly the classical pronunciation and the ecclesiastical pronunciation, okay? Here, in this course, we'll be using the so-called pronuntiatio restituta, that is, classical pronunciation. So, what is this pronuntiatio restituta? It's the pronunciation that linguists, like real, actual linguists, have reconstructed because, according to linguistic research and data, is the one considered to have been used in the Latin of Julius, Caesar, Cicero, etc. Like, you know, all these big guys. When we think about Latin, we think about uh, Julius, Caesar, Cicero, etc. So, all of these people spoke more or less like we are going to study and practice here. Of course, we are in this quick start uh, class, so uh, I cannot go into all the details of uh, pronunciatio restituta, uh, but for now, Let's see the super basics. For an English-speaking person, the most important aspects uh, you need to know so far are the following. Uh, and you see that there's almost no information, so it's quite easy, okay? Vowels are pure vowels. I mean, this might be like da, but, but yeah, okay, so a. A is a. It's not a. It's not a. Uh, it's a. A is a. A is a. E is E, etc. Okay, so A, E, E, O, U. So no O, no I, no E, etc. Okay, later, C is always K. So K, 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 No C, no C, no things like that. Okay, so actually, for example, Cicero does, of course, Cicero is an uh, English pronunciation. Uh, how did Cicero himself pronoun, uh, pronounce his own name? Kikero, Kikero, Kikero. Okay? So, C is always Ki. G is always Ge. Okay? So, Ga, Ge, I, Go, Gu. Later, in the group, G, U plus vowel, U is always pronounced. Maybe more important, in the group, Q, U, plus vowel is always pronounced. So, for example, uh, let's say, aqua is aqua. Uh, uh, I don't know, for example, uh, some example about this. So, uh, sanguis would be sanguis. Now, 
the letter H is silent. And I know that you might have heard or you might hear, uh, hear uh, in the future that uh, people who know a lot of Latin, that they even speak Latin and they uh, pronounce the, the letter H. Okay, so at least in my understanding and the understanding of uh, many linguists, H in Latin, in classical Latin, in pronunciatio restituta, is silent. As in English, our, we don't pronounce our in English, or even annihilate, okay? So you don't pronounce the H in classical Latin. So for example, uh, homo, this is homo, this is not homo. So for example, ad hominem, no? uh, this uh, fallacy, ad hominem, is not ad hominem. And last, the letter V is pronounced like English uh, W. So, for example, the super famous Julius Caesar quote that uh, for sure uh, you know is this one. You probably have heard uh, Veni, Vidi, Vici. No, Veni, Vidi, Wiki. Okay, that's how Julius Caesar uh, pronounced it. Of course, Nothing wrong if you, uh, for some reason, have already learned or prefer to learn ecclesiastical Latin pronunciation. Nothing wrong with that. But in this course, I will be uh, using and practicing and teaching pronunciatio restituta, uh, classical pronunciation. Later, uh, just to finish this pronunciation thing, there are only three diphthongs, I, oi, au, and they are pronounced as such. So, uh, in many uh, English-speaking bibliography, uh, usually they say that this is pronounced I, this is pronounced OI, and this is pronounced AU. Um, no, this is I, I, I. I know that it might be uh, hard to pronounce at first I instead of I, but it's I, and this is OI, okay? In any case, uh, no big deal so far. These are just like some points to uh, know how to pronounce classical Latin. Later, super important, cases and their syntax. You might have heard this uh, word, cases, and you might have heard that this cases thing is super hard and super complicated. Well, let's see, it's not so hard. One of the most shocking features of Latin, if we compare it to English or Spanish, which uh, you might also know, is the existence of six cases in nominal morphology. By nominal, I mean nouns, adjectives, pronouns, okay? Depending on the syntactic function of a word within the sentence, the noun, adjective, or pronoun will have different endings. Don't freak out yet. Uh, it's going to be super easy. Uh, you will understand it uh, super quick. So, and actually, <laughs> uh, this is so easy that English actually have cases. You will see. English kind of have some remnants of this. Consider the following. Who is your friend? He is my friend. Okay. Whom did you see? I know that most people don't say whom did you see, but you know what I mean, okay? Whom did you see? I saw him. And whose book is this? This book is his, John's. Okay, so what do we see here that depending on the syntactic function of each of these, we say who, whom, or whose. And here we, uh, we say he, him, his. And also like John's, no? Like this is. No? So we see that, for example, here we just have like nothing, let's say, like we have no ending because this is the subject. Here we have this M because this is the direct object. And here we have this S because this is the uh, person something belongs to, okay? So we can see that English kind of has at least three cases. The case for the subject, for the object, and for the possession. Okay, so uh, you will see that in Latin is pretty much the same, but with six cases instead of three, okay? So uh, let's look into Latin itself. We are learning Latin, no? So here we have canis puellam mordet, and there uh, we have canem puella mordet. 
And at first, we, we can see that this is more or less the same sentence written twice with uh, small differences. Now, canis is dog, huella is girl, and mordet uh, is bite, the verb bite. So, as we can understand, the dog bites the girl. Okay. And here we would say, the dog bites the girl. But no, here is the girl who bites the dog. And why if the sentence is pretty much the same? The order of the words even is the same. No, because of the endings. The, the word order in English, in, in, in Latin, sorry, doesn't matter. What matters in Latin is the endings. And here, uh, just like here we have this, this M in English, the object, so canem is the object. And here we have, let's say, nothing, so this is the subject. So the girl bites the dog. And here uh, we have the dog bites the girl. Again, like this M, not for the object. Um, right now, I know that, of course, you still don't know cases in Latin, so uh, you just have to believe me because I say so, okay? Uh, we will start learning all of these ending things just in this uh, class already. So, to uh, sum up, uh, here we have the subject bites the object. The subject bites the object. Okay? So, the dog bites the girl, the girl bites the dog. Okay? Each case, and, and of course, each of these forms, canis, canem, huellam, huella, this is a case, this is a case, this is a case, this is a case, okay? So each case has several syntactic functions. In this case, <laughs> redundant, but okay, in this case we have uh, the case of the subject, the case of the subject, the case of the object, the case of the object, okay? So we have six cases, so we will have at least six syntactic functions, okay? The most important theory you need to know uh, for now is as follows. Of course, this is much more complicated, but for now, like 90% of all you need to know about this is summed up here, okay? So we have six cases, as I said, and they are called uh, like this, okay? The first one, and by the way, uh, we are going to learn them in this very order. I know that in some, again, in some English-speaking books, uh, grammars, etc., uh, first, you might have only five cases. No, we should learn all the six cases. And then, they might appear in different, in different order. Usually, it's nominative, genitive, and then accusative, whatever, no? Like, whatever order. Uh, no, we should uh, be learning them like this, okay? Because this is the best order to uh, memorize, because we are going to have to memorize things, okay? So, uh, we have to learn like this. And how do we learn this? Just like, like this, no? So, nominative, vocative, accusative, genitive, dative, ablative, okay? Just like that. Uh, by the way, of course, here I have made some mistakes uh, from, uh, from Spanish. But okay, so nominative, the first case, is the subject and the attributes. Vocative is the appellative function, uh, like getting the attention of someone else. So, for example, if uh, you uh, see someone uh, on the street and you say, Hey, John! And this John is the vocative, because you want to get his attention. No? Hey, John! John! So this is the vocative. Accusative, of course, also in Latin with two Cs. Uh, accusative is the direct object uh, when it has no preposition. Okay, so if no preposition, then the direct object. Uh, don't freak out if you have no idea about syntax or your syntax is completely rusty, okay? Uh, you can uh, click here and there you have all the theory uh, applied uh, to English, like the basic theory about uh, syntax, so you can follow uh, the explanations of this course. I'm going to assume that you know the basic syntax. If you don't, again, click here, understand this super basic English syntax and come back here. Okay, so accusative, if you don't know what the uh, direct object is, so here, etc. Okay, direct object and then uh, different kinds of adverbials according to the preposition. 
Uh, of course, if you know, if you happen to know German, for example, you might be familiar with all of these words, and you might be familiar that, for example, accusat accusative, no, in, in German, um, it has also the same syntactic, uh, syntactic uh, functions. Okay, direct object without preposition, and depending on the preposition, it can be an adverbial. For example, the direction uh, I go to school. So this to school would be with accusative plus the preposition, which uh, means uh, to, etc. Okay? Then genitive is the complement of a noun or an adjective. Uh, dative is the indirect object. And then ablative is uh, always ablative. Uh, either they have prepositions or no prepositions, it doesn't matter. Ablative is always adverbials. It can be like, I go to school with my friend. So that with my friend is the company. So that's uh, ablative with the preposition, which means company. For example, I am in school. No, not I go to school direction. No, like I am in school. Uh, so that's like the uh, location. So that's with ablative plus the preposition, which means location, etc. Or for example, I uh, nail a nail uh, with the hammer. I hit a nail with the hammer. So with this with the hammer is just ablative, no preposition, because the hammer is um, the instrument that you use. Okay, so all of these things we will be learning, like when preposition, which preposition, etc. So now, if we come back here, we can uh, know already that this is the nominative, because it's the uh, subject, and this is the Accusative, because it's the direct object. No? So, the dog bites the girl. And here is a direct, uh, sorry, direct object. And here uh, we have the, uh, the subject. Okay? The girl bites the dog. Again, no need to freak out if you don't know what all of this subject, direct object, etc. is. Click here and you will learn it super easy. Now, we move on to the first declension. Okay, and here we have this table, which uh, you might think this is a lot of information right now. It's not, okay? Uh, here, we, uh, we can see two columns, okay? So, this left column, right column, and here we have nominative, vocative, accusative, genitive, dative, ablative. So that's the importance of learning the uh, name and the function of each case in this specific order, because in all the tables, I'm always going to be using the same order, okay? So here we have, uh, of course, singular and plural, okay? Because nouns and adjectives and pronouns have uh, singular and plural. And then, depending on uh, the syntactic function, for example, the subject, we are going to have a. If it's, for example, the uh, direct object, we are going to have am. If it's, for example, the uh, complement of the noun, so for example, uh, Mary's dog, this Mary's, uh, in Latin, it will be uh, with i for the first declension, etc. Okay? So here we, um, we have this table, and what do we do with this table? We just uh, learn it uh, by heart. Uh, there's, no, there's no trick, okay? Uh, we just have to learn it. We can uh, try to recite it, we can uh, write it down several times. Okay, I know at first it's boring, but um, it just takes like five minutes, okay, to memorize this, maybe five, ten. And of course, uh, you don't have to know it like absolutely, and dream with it, etc. You just have to, uh, to know it, just like that. And then with the practice, with Latin texts, um, you will actually absorb all of this grammar. Okay, so again, don't freak out. It's easier than it seems at first. Okay, so you have to learn the table. Just learn the table. There you have the six cases in singular and in plural. The part underlined, so you see that uh, always the ending is underlined, okay? So uh, that's because the ending 
is what changes, then you see that the part which is not underlined is always the same. Okay? Actually, like we can call it the root, the stem. Root, stem is the same. Okay? With all of this information, the underlined part, the endings, that's how we know that, for example, a dominant is accusative because am is for the accusative singular, etc. And then, of course, I know that uh, because you might be thinking like, okay, but here we have I, 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 I. We have, uh, for four cases, we have the same ending. Okay, it's just like that. Uh, then also, you might be thinking, what's the difference between this A ah with this thing here and this A ah with this, uh, this other thing here? For now, it doesn't really matter, okay? This is for future reference. For now, you don't have to learn or to take into account these uh, symbols, okay? So, as I was saying, the part underlined is the ending of each case, which will be used in all the other words belonging to the first declension. So, for example, if we have rosa, rosae, uh, rosa, rosae, no? When we say, for example, rosa, rosae, puella, puella, regina, reginae, what we are doing is saying this and this, nominative and genitive. We will talk about this in uh, a uh, future class, okay? So, uh, for example, um, rosa, rosae. Uh, of course, never rosae with the accent there, no, okay? Uh, the accent never goes uh, in the last syllable. Okay, so for example, if we have rosa, rosae, what we do is just rosa, rosa, rosam, rosae, rosae, rosa, rosae, rosae, rosas, rosarum, rosis, rosis. Okay? So, just like that. And the same with any other word uh, which belongs to the first declension. And as we have already said a few times, the ending is the part which reveals the case or cases of a word. As we already know, according to the case, the word will have a specific syntactic function. So again, if we have nominat uh, nominative, is the subject. If we have the accusative is the direct object. If we have the vocative, we are trying to get someone's attention. If we have the uh, dative, it's the indirect object. No? Like, uh, for example, I give an apple to the girl. So that to the girl is the indirect object, etc. Again, I'm assuming that you know the basic syntax, okay? Then we have the active indicative present tense. The present tense. This is the most basic tense, as you can imagine. If you know Spanish, which you might, you'll see that it is quite similar. It's surprisingly similar, or maybe not so surprisingly, because Spanish, after all, comes from Latin, so it's quite obvious, no? At first, we only need to know the basics to recognize the person, first, second, third, and the number, singular, plural, of a verb. Uh, what do I mean with this? We don't have to know how to conjugate the verbs. Okay, we don't have to say like, for example, okay, so give me the present of the verb to love. And I have to do like, amo, amas, amat, amamos, etc. No, uh, we just have to know. So for example, if we, found, uh, if we find in some text, amamos, so we have to know that amamos is first person plural. Okay, we don't have to know how to conjugate, just to recognize, which is the easy part. Okay, uh, so these are the endings again. We have three persons, first, second, third, and two numbers, singular and plural, of course. Three multiplied by two, six, okay? So, uh, these are the endings for the present. O, S, T, mus, tis, nt, <laughs> okay? So, for example, the verb to love is as follows. Uh, amo, amas, amat, amamus, amatis, amant. Okay, so as I said, this is pretty much Spanish, almost Spanish. Super easy. Um, then, the verb sum, which is the verb to be, the verb to exist, there is, there are, all of that, is irregular. Just um, the same as it is in English, not like uh, the verb to be is I am, you are, he is, were, was, no? So, also, in Latin, the verb sum uh, is irregular. So you just have to learn it by heart every time that we learn a new tense. Now we are in the present tense, so uh, this is what we have to learn right now. Sum es est sumus 
estis sunt. So, I mean, you, you can see that more or less is the same endings, but then the root is irregular. Here we have an S, here we have an E, E, eh, uh, etc. No, so we, we just have to learn it by heart. And that's it. That's all the theory that we need to know uh, to start practicing with Latin. Either it is uh, syntax uh, analysis, morphosyntactic analysis, morphology, translation, like lines on text, etc. Or uh, reading Latin, like we read the newspaper, okay? So, this is all the theory. We need to start analyzing and translating our first sentences. Go directly here, click here and follow the instructions that you will find uh, in text, uh, written, and on videos. Then, this is for the analysis translation. Then we also have the, uh, as I said, reading, like we read the newspaper, but in Latin, okay? So, before or after these sentences, so we can do this first or uh, second, okay? Before or after the sentences, you can try and read, without analysis translation, the first chapters of Maxi and Pay, which is a, a book with, uh, let's say, uh, stories, like super simple basic stories in Latin. And you might be surprised how easy uh, it is to understand Latin, even if you almost don't know any Latin. Okay, so um, it's quite good. According to what you've just learned, Oh, like before, like all these uh, present uh, endings of the first declension, etc. In this class, try to notice the grammatical features you already know. No? So, for example, when we are uh, reading, uh, we find, for example, magistra uelam amat. So we, saw, we know that magistra is the subject because it's nominative. Uelam uh, is accusative, so it's the direct object, etc. Okay? So try to notice all of those things. And then uh, you will see uh, that everything will start clicking in your head. So uh, this is quite uh, satisfying, okay? When, when you, uh, because of course you have all of these, no? Like, okay, so tables, like grammar, too much of it maybe you might think at first. Uh, but once you start reading and you start doing things which actually work, you will feel like, okay, this, it's working, actually. Huh? I'm achieving something. Okay, and that's quite satisfying. Once you finish the text in the first module, so this and this, uh, so you know if or you know that Latin is for you and that you want to spend time and enjoy it, because of course you have to spend uh, quite a lot of time on Latin if you want to become uh, kind of fluent in it, okay? You have to spend time, you have to uh, make the effort of uh, studying, learning grammar, practicing reading, practicing analysis, translation, etc. Uh, so when you have done all of this, then yes, you should go for the rest of the classes of the first module. Okay, so there are like six more classes. This is, remember, the zeroth class. Uh, then there are like six more, which is pretty much what we have learned, but uh, with some more information. Okay, so you should uh, be doing those two because they are going to be super useful for the rest of the course. Okay, uh, and that's it. So uh, click here.